the first depth chart for the Arizona Cardinals has come out. It ain't pretty, but that's okay. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Cardinals, your team every day. Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow the podcast at Locked on AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen each and every day, free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Please go to the YouTube channel, subscribe, like, leave a comment, turn notifications on. It's about to be wild here in the Valley. And <laughs> I've had a couple people reach out to like, listen, you're kind of pumping this up and – it's probably going to be a down year in the win-loss column. Like, yeah, but this is rebirth. This is sheer excitement of the unknown. And, I mean, any media member, you know, radio host, podcast host, whatever, maybe whatever hats I've worn in my career, you always want something exciting, whether it's a really good team or a really bad team. Meddling in the middle is just, mm, it's, uh, you know, with this, and we're going to talk about the, the inaugural 2023 depth chart for the Arizona Cardinals coming out ahead of their Friday night matchup against the Broncos kick off the preseason. Like, there's going to be excitement talking about the defensive line. There's going to be excitement talking about the cornerback room, both of which are inferior to what an NFL franchise should put out on game day. But we knew this going in. We knew this would be a two offseason process, or at least I did. And this is just seeing pen to paper on what it could potentially look like in 2023 for the Cardinals. If the linebackers don't step up, it's going to be tough to stop the run. If the pass rush isn't there and the safeties don't cover for, you know, uh, for holes in the defense like they have over the last couple seasons, pass defense is going to be rough. But – This is a learning process for an organization that needed a hard reset. You can't do everything in one offseason, especially not having that much cap space. But what they've done, at least so far, is position themselves to have the opportunity to be great later. And that's really all you can ask for. So as we go through camp and we're watching camp, cool, routes, awesome. There's a, there's the video that went viral of Colt McCoy hitting Antonio Hamilton in the back of the helmet. And, you know, it, it, it's so dumb because, I mean, it was obviously a half speed kind of walk through, um, you know, a route run. It's just like, you know, but the, the, the Cardinals are going to be, the Cardinals are going to be the butt of jokes. Let's just put it that way this season. And that's okay. They've, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how different that's been from years past. So right now, internally, the Arizona Cardinals, led by Jonathan Gannon and his cabinet, just need to go out one foot at a time and make this team and organization better. And it sounds like such a blanket statement. It sounds so cliched and obvious, but from where we've experienced the Arizona Cardinals being, during the second half of two seasons ago and the entirety of last season. This was the necessary hard reset rock bottom hit, in my opinion, to get them to where they want to go eventually. So when you look at the depth chart, I'm going to go over this. I'm going to talk about the offense, the defense, surprises, storylines that can come out of this. And I'll preview the game as we get closer on Friday. But this is the last summation of how we got here. We're seeing Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons positioned differently than they had been under the last regime. There's a lot of moving parts and a lot of uncertainty and a lot of question marks. But these question marks are different. These question marks aren't, will this player perform 
in year four, or are they going to have to let him walk? There are a couple of those conversations, but that's what these conversations have been. Will Steve Kime need to make a trade to make up for the poor draft that he had? Different questions, different uncertainties. Will BJ Ojolari be ready? Who, who came off the pup list uh, yesterday to make an impact in year one? Will Gary Williams be healthy and be able to make an impact where CB1 and CB2 may be up for grabs depending on what Marco Wilson does this year? Will James Conner be old faithful out of the backfield? Will Michael Wilson, who wowed in camp, continue that through the season? Will Greg Dorch take that step forward and really put the Cardinals to the test at the end of this season regarding if they need to give him a bigger contract than a one-year deal that they gave him? Will Hollywood Brown deserve wide receiver one money? Will Zayvon Collins become a star on the defense? Will Budu Baker be happy after this season? These questions, while some of them are performance-based on veterans, a lot of them are future-paced for younger players to solidify themselves as future stars of this organization. And that's something that we have not experienced recently in the Valley. So I'll go through quickly here just the names, and then in the next two segments, we'll kind of break down what this means. So the starting offensive line for the Cardinals, left tackle, DJ Humphreys, left guard, Elijah Wilkinson, center, Froholt, right guard, Hernandez, right tackle, Paris Johnson Jr. So Kelvin Beecham is now being backed to be the backup to Paris Johnson, okay, which is interesting. Now, Paris Johnson can play left tackle and right tackle, and – we're going to see right away, because listen, with Kelvin Beecham, he's been serviceable. He's, he was one of Steve Kahn's better you know, offseason additions on the offensive line, and he didn't cost a whole lot of money for the Cardinals. Wide receiver group, Rondo Moore, Zach Pascal, Marquise Brown, James Conner. Uh, defensive end, uh, the line is LJ Collier, Lecky Fotu, Jonathan Ledbetter. Linebackers, Dennis Gardeck, Kazir White, Chris Barnes, Zayvon Collins, and the cornerback room starters, Antonio Hamilton, Marco Wilson, and Jalen Thompson, Buda Baker in the safety position. So here's the thing. I mean, there are some bright spots, but when you actually look at the depth chart, it's just a reminder that this is going to be a two-year process, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Alex Lancy, Locked On Cardinals, coming up next. Are there any surprises on offense, surprises on defense when you see the first, the inaugural depth chart of 2023 for the Arizona Cardinals? I'm going to hit it next as Locked On Cardinals rolls on. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by eBay Motors. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see if Vinny Iyer has picked, us, picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Looking for a second-year fantasy football wide receiver? who can drive your team to big points while he catches on with a new starting quarterback, then expect a smooth ride when investing in the Saints, Chris Olave. Olave was dangerous as number one last year in every capacity as a rookie, and there's no reason to pump the brakes now that he has Derek Carr throwing to him. Vinny Iyer from Lockdown Fantasy Football is going to help you with your fantasy championship, and eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With eBay Guaranteed Fit and over 122 parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, shocks, struts, you name it. eBay Motors has it. And make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So, Go for it. Switch gears. Crank the AC and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, everything your vehicle is calling for, 
is just a click away. For the parts and accessories to fit your vehicle, just look for that green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Locked on Cardinals, Alex Clancy here. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being an everydayer. If you've been here since 2017, if this is your first listen, thank you. I'm very excited for this season. I'm excited for myriad reasons. I'm excited even without Kyler Murray on the field because this is the rebirth. This is, as I've said a couple times, the Cardinals without a restrictor plate. Opportunities abound. And this is not, oh, yep, we are sugarcoating something that cannot be sugarcoated right now. No. This is how a team is built organically. This is how a team builds a strong foundation and culture to be able to attract big-time free agents, to be able to trade for big-time players. This is the beginning. And this is something we haven't experienced because the last regime wouldn't let it happen. It was ignorance. It was lack of wherewithal. It was lack of understanding what needed to happen in order to build a team properly with the strength and infrastructure to grow and scale. And now we were on the precipice of it. And now after camp and with the first uh, depth chart out, we are now in it. It is Arizona Cardinals 2.0 in gauge. So I ran through the depth chart. Okay, so are there some surprises here? Uh, Paris Johnson Jr. solidifying himself on the right side isn't necessarily a surprise. It's nice. It's great to see a sixth overall pick start his plight to be an all-world tackle for the Cardinals. Because remember, if you don't protect Kyler Murray, none of this is going to work. And you know what? For sure, for the Kyler Murray haters out there, if you don't protect QB1, Ain't none of this going to work. So Paris Johnson, that is a good thing. It's not necessarily a surprise. It's a good thing. Um, you know, my surprises here are just a lack of talent on the line, on the defensive line, in the cornerback room. Like, we knew that both were going to be the light. Okay. And Lecky Fotu's played fine. Rashard Lawrence has played fine. They were both fourth-round picks a couple years back out of Utah and LSU respectively. But having LJ Collier and Jonathan Ledbetter as your ends, it's just not like they're nice players, complimentary players. But there's no fear factor there. I talk a lot about opposing teams that have to scheme for specific players on the Arizona Cardinals roster. And the Cardinals don't have many this season. Hollywood Brown, half the scheme for. Buda Baker. It's really it. You know, and this obviously evolves. And as teams get better, like if, Isaiah, if they found something with Isaiah Simmons playing, you know, Rover in the middle of the field in the safety position, if they found something, I mean, that may be something that opposing teams will have to scheme for. But specifically, the Cardinals have no juice up front, they've got no names. They've got no any, they've got no sort of clout. They don't have any sort of clout that needs to be accounted for and focused on during scheming, uh, you know, in the upcoming week for opposing offenses. They just don't. Now, again, that can change. And of course, opposing offenses will always have their film study. They'll do all the things like that because these are NFL players. But there's no star juice on the defense for the Cardinals, save Buda Bicker. And if Zayvon Collins takes that, natural step forward in year three like we're expecting him to do because his trajectory is slow and steady but he's got exponentially better and if he's moving to more of his natural position where there's some more c quarterback hit quarterback than there were when he was playing off the ball we could be talking about a different name but going through the depth chart the surprises are like man those rooms are weak like the cornerback room last year was a struggle And now they've taken a step backwards. Letting Byron Murphy go was the right move. 
even though we didn't get a whole lot of cheese from Minnesota. But it's more excitement with opportunity to see if Marco Wilson can take that step forward. To see if Antonio Hamilton can make some splash plays. And when it comes to both of those rooms, it's just not there. So this is going to be like, this is the first like uh, treasure map, roadmap to, okay, this is what the Cardinals need to address next season. Because remember, this is a two-step process. And I mean, other like surprises, there aren't really any seeing Isaiah Simmons being second string to Jalen Thompson for strong safety. Like, it's just, it's going to be fun. Seeing Kazir White in there playing off ball is great. Another surprise to me is seeing get Dennis Gardeck as a starting outside linebacker. That should never be the case. He was a darling a couple years ago when he had these, the massive uh, snap to sack total numbers. The percentage was astronomical. He is a great special teamer. And he is a great pl plug and play C quarterback, hit quarterback on specific packages. But if you need to rely on Dennis Gardeck, it's just not the right, not the right situation to be in. And I know this is the first death chart. I know things can change. I know all of these things, but I take the information that's given to me at a given time and we discuss it. What are the storylines going into week one? of the preseason. I'm going to do a mini segment next, and then I'm going to break it down a lot more as we get closer to the game. Alex Lancey locked on Cardinals. Stay right there. Final segment, Locked On Cardinals. Alex Clancy here. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen, free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Go like, subscribe, YouTube channel. Let's blow it up. Leave a comment. I still haven't seen, like, this is going to be an ongoing thing. DM me on Twitter at Clancy's Corner, comment in the comments for any podcast. I need a better name for Hollywood Brown, Rondell Moore, and Greg Dorch. The three Teslas was my, it was my working title. It was my working title, and I'm sick of it. I'm done with it. I've seen some, they've been okay. I need a banger. I need something I can call those three wide receivers. I am crowdsourcing this. DM me on Twitter. Leave a comment on here. Let's find one before the season starts. Clock is ticking, y'all. So, storylines going into week one against Denver. I think the first one is going to be quarterback, if it's Clayton Toon starting. I would assume it's going to be. We don't know exactly what it's going to be yet. There have been there have been rumblings. I'm not getting excited yet, but I think Clayton Toon should play the game. The, like the game. Does David Blau need reps? Does Jeff Driscoll need reps? He's got 38 quarterbacks on this damn team. Let Clayton Toon play. Does Colt McCoy need reps? I'm assuming maybe you'll see Colt McCoy for the first couple series, maybe a series, and then Clayton Toon will play. That's the big one for me. It's Clayton Toon. Okay? But the 1A for me is Michael Wilson because here's the thing. Michael Wilson has been the star of camp. It wasn't like Greg Dorch and Antonio Hamilton last year, two great story guys who, you know, haven't ever really made it in the NFL, but they've been around and they're getting their chance and they're thriving. Like, that's great. Those storylines are awesome, especially because both of them are still Arizona Cardinals. Fantastic. I don't mean to diminish what happened last season, but Michael Wilson was third round pick. Big wide receiver, something the Arizona Cardinals absolutely need. And his route running, his separation, and his hands have been the talk of camp. And that's, I mean, me just coming back saying the cornerback room isn't great and then me saying that he's played well. You know, I'm not sure if that has something to do with it, but Michael Wilson is the 1A storyline. Because if the Cardinals found something with him, everything changes. And I mean that. Everything changes. Because look at this. So 
say Clayton Toon come like I, Clayton Toon's one for sure because he's a quarterback, and we got to see who the quarterback's going to be for the Cardinals going into the season until Kyler Murray comes back. This is a start Clayton Toon from day one until he forces you to pull him due to his play. Podcast. Colt McCoy, it serves no purpose for the Cardinals to start Colt McCoy. No purpose. Unless Clayton Toon isn't ready to the point where he's going to look like Nathan Peterman. Zach Wilson looked like the worst quarterback in the history of the NFL, and he got six or seven games last year. So when it comes to Clayton Toon, that's the number one storyline. Number two, though is Michael Wilson, because picture this. He has 800 yards receiving, six touchdowns, but really shows that he belongs on an NFL stage immediately, regardless of quarterback play, because you're going to have to kind of grade on a curve with Hollywood Brown and Greg Dorch and Rondo Moore, depending on the quarterback play and depending on, you know, game flow and depending on if Drew Petzig's offense is really going to be a Cleveland-style offense. I'm talking about that in its entirety tomorrow. This offense under Drew Petzing, Petzing, is it going to look exactly like the Cleveland Browns offense from last year? And it's fascinating, the little wrinkles. But if Michael Wilson comes in and balls out, I mean, for a rookie, like we're not talking about, you know, massive, you know, 1,500 receiving yards, 12 touchdowns. I'm not talking about that. But solidifies himself as an Arizona Cardinal wide receiver two moving forward. There's a couple different questions that will arise. One, do they need to extend – Hollywood Brown, even though he's Kyler Murray's best friend, you know, whatever it may be, he's going to want $20 million a year, even though he probably doesn't deserve it. He's going to want $20 million next year. And maybe he does. Maybe he'll have a big year. Then you're looking at Rondo Moore and Greg Dorch. You're looking at Marvin Harrison Jr. knocking on the doorstep. You're looking at potentially one of the best young cores of wide receivers the the, the NFL has. Sure. I mean, you've got Cincinnati. Now you've got Minnesota. Uh, who knows what's happening in Kansas City? I mean, that's a Patrick Mahomes project. You know, that it doesn't really matter who the receivers are, it shows. But if if Michael Wilson balls out and Hollywood Brown has, a, has another solid year and they draft Marvin Harrison Jr., this offense is different. It's a lot different than the Cardinals winning three games next year, moving on from Hollywood Brown, Michael Wilson not really playing well and then drafting Marvin Harrison and having him be the savior of the offense. If he could come in to an already competent wide receiver room, everything is different. They're ahead of schedule at that point. And I did ask the question, if Michael Wilson balls out, do they have to draft Marvin Harrison Jr.? Don't let where draft picks happen Cloud your judgment on talent. If Michael Wilson balls out, has a thousand yard receiving and 10 touchdowns this year, there is going to be a clear question. Do they need to draft Marvin Harrison Jr. Or do you trade back and get two first round picks and a player on top of like every, just what I implore you to do on this podcast is not just think the way everybody else does. Nope. You drive Marvin Harrison Jr. You drive the quarterback. You do this, you do this. That's fine. And that's not an irrational way to think about it. And it's also irrational to think that's the only way. So that's why Clayton Toon and Michael Wilson, that's what I'm going to be watching. It'll be nice to see the defensive players. I'm sure Kazir White will get a little run. I'm sure Zayvon Collins will play a couple series. But I want to see what the future of this offense is going to look like. It'll be fun to see Keontae Ingram if he's healthy to play. Like, The main storylines for me, though, Clayton Toon, Michael Wilson. The offense under a microscope tomorrow, Locked on Cardinals. I'll talk to you.